Good morning, folks. We're going to be lightning with the updates because at the end of today's news is nine minutes of explanation on the disaster app stretch goals and answering your questions about the app. I know your time is precious, so let's get to it and wrap up quickly. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find yet another calm day on our star, as expected given the lack of planetary alignments. Only concern is minor, and it would be those small plasma filaments center longitude just north of the equator. Solar flaring, matching in kind, we are all calm, but I do not expect that to last much longer as in just half a week we're going to see Mercury start to come in and conjoin Venus from a heliocentric view. This is the primary solar alignment, and things really should get interesting there. Even if not in terms of solar flares fired at Earth, then at least in terms of far side eruptions and heliospheric disruptions therefrom. Of course, it will be just a week later that we see the primary geocentric conjunction take place, Sun, Earth, Jupiter, with the added bonus of it being a new moon solar eclipse, so we've got four spheres in a line there. Late in the day yesterday, a few dense waves of solar wind particles swept past Earth, compressing our magnetic field and offering slight global instability, but with localized level 2 storm condition effects as seen by Karuna seems to be waning now. Top quakes of the day were all rare location rumbles like this one on top of Earth's magnetic south pole. You heard correctly, right on it. Also one well above average in California, along with another one just slightly above average. I will have my eye on Cali today because a nice OLR gradient is approaching the coastline that was partially hidden from view due to missing data rectangles which show up as white there. In terms of the global earthquake watch index, we are on the rise due to a sunspot trough expected here in the coming days or so. Add to that the trailing extension of that northern coronal hole is presenting much more strongly than I think any of us anticipated. Plus, of course, the planets and sun may have something to say here soon as well. Well, folks, as I watched this unfold last night, I could only hope that no observers were among those taken by these storms or had major damage to their property, etc. This is indeed what I had warned about for two morning news videos in a row. Tough to watch, really. Folks, we'll come back to this on either a deeper look or fly on the wall episode, but I am exhaling as one of my primary concerns and talking points on our future is hitting the mainstream in stride. Folks, we have been on the edge of this for a long time, and even though this article is obviously only giving you the one-sided half of the climate change story, the point is that the concerns we have been discussing are legit, and now everyone agrees. Focus on the food trouble rather than the global warming stuff. Right now, it's time for an update on the Disaster Prediction app and answers to your most common questions. It's 5.15 a.m. in Oklahoma City, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. The Disaster Prediction app Kickstarter campaign started on February 18th. The primary funding goal was achieved in 39.2 hours. This app will provide warnings for things like earthquakes, tropical storms, and tornadoes using factors that the observers have come to know and understand. Dr. Kongpop Buyen and Ben Davidson will now combine their models to provide an even better means of forecasting disaster. We will be using coronal holes, sunspots, and planetary geometry to forecast these disasters. But we also have the opportunity to expand the modeling to include meteorological data and energetic Earth phenomena as well, provided we can afford to get it done. This is where our stretch goals come in, and those are what allow us to not just make the app, but make it more robust and more widely available. We'll discuss those now and some of your most pertinent questions about the app. The primary funding goal of 35000 was meant to finish the programming of the factor algorithms, design and build the app, take care of administrative costs of bringing it to market, and maybe help market the project to get the word out. But more money means more functionality, better programming, a better app, a better user experience. It also means that we can aim to release on multiple platforms at once. 
Our first stretch goal is 55,000, and that would allow us to come out on Apple and Android devices, along with assuring that we get all the program coding we need to make a truly revolutionary forecasting app. We plan to do this with the proceeds of the app anyway, but we'd rather come out blazing rather than take baby steps over time. The second stretch goal is 85,000, and with that we would probably be able to come out on the Windows platforms as well, add even more features, and perhaps even access powerful computers to help us do some math on the front end. That stuff is not cheap. But first things first. Check out the app if you haven't. There are some very cool rewards, which many of you are already taking advantage of. I do not at all see 55 as being out of reach, and it will make all the difference in the world to get there. Remember that the Mobile Observatory project aimed to raise just 35 as well, and that was to support RV transformation and about 15 events across the country. We got 60,000 and were able to have 75 events in 41 states and 4 Canadian provinces in places like science centers, university lecture halls, campground amphitheaters, and many more intimate settings like right in front of the RV. The base costs are what they are, but above that the gains are massive. The same goes for this app. The base development is what it is, but the icing on the cake here is more like liquid gold sprinkled with diamond dust in terms of what it means for the app. Let's get to 55, folks. We can do it. Now on to our most popular questions and our best attempt to answer them. Obviously the most asked question involves what devices will be able to use the app, and Hopefully, as we've said, we'll be able to get on both iOS and Android here if we hit our first stretch goal. I'd love to be launching on Windows too, but it is still very early in the process. We're just getting started, kind of in an informational stage. What sort of warnings will be given? This can be answered in two ways, so I'll try to do both. First, warnings will come as push notifications, and there will be two types of those automatic notifications based on disaster risk score, a threshold preference that you, the user, will set, and those that either myself or Kongpop will send personally. The risk score will be related to storms and earthquake risks and wholly driven by algorithm automatically. Some warnings require a bit more detail, clarification, correction, modification, enhancement, or simply do not lend themselves to computer modeling. That will not be abused, and those will be sent by either Dr. Uyen or myself. So those are the two types of notifications that will be sent, but there is another way to answer the question of what type of warning will be given. There will definitely be global warnings for storm formation and intensification and earthquake instability. But Dr. Uyen and I also believe we can narrow parameters like location and earthquake magnitude. We have already seen a bit of this with earth spot quakes and outgoing long wave radiation, the OLR, but foreshock models and ionospheric precursors might be able to be integrated as well. Even location-based alerts will be sent out broadly, however, in hopes of widespread warning and subsequent event verification leading to greater acceptance of the science and awareness of the app. Will the app include things like fracking? It will not. While it is becoming clear that human activities like fracking do cause earthquakes and potential contamination risks to local water and air, the earthquakes we are talking about here are the large ones, the damaging ones, way bigger than anything ever caused by fracking, and our models are being developed to track natural phenomena in the solar system, on the sun, and here on Earth. There is also still the whole run of underground geological heat and pressure dynamics at work, and those really are not possible to model. We're merely attempting to show when there may be a triggering mechanism for that pressure or piezoelectric force from the sun or the planets and where on earth it appears the stress is building to a break point. How much will the app cost to buy? Well that is a very difficult question. It is ultimately going to be a decision based on cost to market, cost of maintenance, and expected development of advancement needs in the future. It may be a subscription type app with a very low cost or a one-time purchase for a bit more. We'll also have to consider the costs for each platform, the fees or commissions that go to someone like Apple or the payment processor, and then hopefully set one price across all platforms for continuity, if possible. Again, no real certainty there, way too early in the process. This one's important. Can you get the t-shirts and hoodies any other way than by donating to the Kickstarter campaign? The basic answer is no. 
it is just my wife and I here doing this, and just adding our book order fulfillment was a titanic task. We generally do not do merchandise for the hassle and the added slap in the face of having yet another toe in the financial paradigm that we all know has so many problems. But the limited addition of gear is also important to justify the reward level. Look, it's obviously not going to cost 100 bucks to make a t-shirt, 300 to make a hoodie. But what those reward levels are paying for is the contribution to the app, the project, and the proof of their support with a very limited edition garment that they can legitimately say is special. Right now, there are 30-something people at hoodie reward level and about 90 at a t-shirt level. If that's all that signs up, that is all that's going to come off the line. The purpose is to reward those contributions. But the one caveat here is they would make some darn good marketing tools if you guys were all wearing them out there. So what we may do is offer a slightly different shirt, one that could still be a marketing tool, but would also not be the same edition as these rare founding member versions. That's about as good of an answer as I could hope to give right now. So who is doing the work on this project? Well, first, Kong and I are acting like a team. We have a division of labor and separate responsibilities, but major decisions will be informed and made jointly after consideration and discussion between us. We plan to use programmers in both the United States and Dr. Uyen's home of Thailand, where the people, culture, language, and business interactions are more familiar to him. And we will be getting input, consultation, ideas, and the final app work done by either a group here in the US or in Thailand. But either way, both groups will be heavily involved in the process before the starting gun fires. Many of the people already working on the algorithms are observers that watch the news with you every day, and they seem very eager to contribute and help the community any way they can. We are very lucky to have them on board, and we owe them a great many thanks. Other questions are about things like, well, what if I get a new credit card, but Kickstarter has the old one? I think you can either change it on Kickstarter, or you can just cancel the first payment and hopefully donate again with a new card. Kickstarter help can probably answer it better than I can. Another good question was, what if I cannot contribute before that March 8th deadline for Kickstarter? Well, for one week and one week only after that, we will have a way to donate to the program and get the same rewards through our sales site, but we'll discuss that more in March. For right now, we can use a big push here in the last two weeks to get over the hump of that first stretch goal and make sure we at least hit Apple and Android. I would say that is my number one goal for the next two weeks, make sure we get to 55. Any ideas on how we do it and get the word out? I trust you know how to find me. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.